Yeah, hi everyone, and welcome back to another online section with um, DIY Agri in the School of Poultry. So today we are going to be having an interesting um, thing to talk about. Uh, like those of us who have seen the poster earlier, are going to be talking about why we should probably go into layer farming. Uh, the promise, the promise that layer farming has, I know a lot of people who are following me are actually broiler farmers. I know a couple of them also do layer farming, but then it's been for some people like DIY always talks about broilers. So I think it's time to also talk about layers uh, time and time again. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about why layers are actually a gold mine, gold mine that you might want to consider. So I don't really want to waste your time in this one. I just want to go into the um, financial aspect of things, how much of money you might invest in the business and what you stand to gain, what you stand to get at the end of the day. So to help us to do that, I'm going to be going real practical right now. So to help us to do that, I have something I'm going to be using. Okay, so I'm going to be working with this Excel sheet that helps us to be able to calculate, especially in terms of feed, what you can put in and what you should expect after selling your eggs and even selling the birds at the end of the day. So let's quickly go into it. No wasting of time. No wasting of time at all. So like the topic says, let me show you facts about layer farming. And uh, let's just begin right here. OK, I want to make it bigger now. All right, so <clears throat> in this feed calculator that we have, we, we are going to be using the first three lines. We are not talking about broilers today, so just this first three. And we are considering a thousand layers, a thousand layers, be it the point of cage or the cheeks. So you might decide to start them at the cheek stage and you might decide to um, buy them at the point of lay or point of cage, as the case may be. So we are first going to be considering the day old cheeks. So on this table here, we have the cost of raising them from, <coughs> excuse me, from week one uh, to the point where they get to point of lay at 22 weeks. 22 weeks is actually, if your birds are not laying at 22, 23 weeks, then something serious is wrong. So most people experience early lay uh, from 16 weeks plus, you might start to get your hex. So most of it happens actually, most of uh, farmers experience the first lay at around 17 weeks, 17 weeks plus, some 18 weeks. So even if they start 17, 18, 19, it's okay. 22 is already getting late. You are, you are going to be like, when are you going to lay? So 22, 23, after 23, if they don't lay, something serious is wrong. Something serious is wrong. All right, so we then then from that point it continues into months, months and months and months and months. So until they live for about one year and some months. So let's just consider it from the beginning. This is actually focusing on the feed, the cost of feed, and which is the bulk of the whole thing. But I'm going to be giving allowance for the other aspect of it, and then I'm going to be showing you. <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to be showing you something at the end of the day. Okay, this I'm going to be explaining some data to you how you can sell the hex and what you stand to get and all that. So for now, let's just focus. Yeah, welcome, welcome, Mr. Innocent. Welcome, Mr. Olalike. So let's quickly focus on that of the old chicks. So from this part. We are doing 1,000 birds. So if you are doing 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, all you need to do is just multiply. So I decided to use this 1,000 to make it 
easy for all of us. Okay, so we are assuming, you know, we have different kinds of feed or brands of feed and their prices. But with 9,000 Naira, you will get a chicks mash. As a matter of fact, that 9,000 also makes allowance for, <clears throat> excuse me, makes allowance for those who like to use broiler starter first for the first two weeks and then move to the chicks mash for another five weeks to make seven weeks. And at the seventh week, the end of the seventh week, they are growing, they are going into grower. So this 9,000 actually makes allowance for you to use the broiler starter. If you are using broiler starter as high as 10,200 and later you go to the chicks mash, the 9,000 there actually makes provision for that. So it covers it. And from that, you now go to the grower mash. You still get a reasonable uh, grower mash of acceptable quality at 6,800. And you can also decide to manufacture yours. You can decide to produce your own feed. And um, for those who have part, uh, taken part in my poultry feed formulation masterclass, I believe by now making that is not a big deal. All right. So the layer mash also with 7,002 or let's, let's say 7,003. You should get something very good. Actually, there are some under this price. There are some lower than that. But with 7,003, you should get something good. And of course, if you are able to make your own feed, you should even get it under 7,000 naira. So that means... On the price of feed, we are not actually bringing down the price just to make sure that the profit is interesting. No, we are being real. We are being real with the market um, price. All right. So quickly, let's just go. And we are considering. Okay, this number of beds is actually one thousand. Don't worry. Yeah, one thousand. So. Actual number of beds, 1,000, you can see over here, all through. So we start to put, we start to factor in mortality uh, after brooding and all that. So we see mortality after the first 12 weeks of their life is 5%, which is reasonable. As a matter of fact, I've, I've done 11,000 birds before and the mortality was just 3%. So 5% is good. It's good allowance for mortality. And I want to quickly explain something. <clears throat> you see, sometimes we advise people to, to do... And before, before the end of this class, I'm going to be showing you case studies. Case studies of two persons. One that started with point of lay. I actually supplied the birds. And the second one that got the old chicks. I also supplied the day old chicks. So I have case studies to, to run with. We are not just cooking up data from the... Um, from our head, there's real data to work with. <clears throat> so I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be showing you uh, some testimonies from them before the end of the session. So why we say sometimes that uh, it's good that you raise your day with yourself, I'm going to explain something quickly. If you study here, most of the time when you buy point of lay, what you get is from 12 weeks to 15 weeks. On rare occasions, you get 16 weeks. And on very rare occasions, you get 18 weeks. Those are very rare cases. So let's say you bought at 14 weeks, which is actually the average 14 weeks point of cage. That means you'll be spending, let's say, about one point. This is what you have as, at 12 weeks. Yeah, 12 weeks you have spent on feeding, all of them. You have spent one point. 043 million and uh at um 14 weeks you have added this and this so you are having almost about 1.3 yeah let's say about 1.3 something million so that's what you'll be spending you have over 1.3 million that you have spent that's 14 weeks and if you actually buy your birds if you buy your point of lay at 40 between 14 to 16 weeks, you will be spending about, especially if you get it about 16 weeks, you'll be spending about 2,700 naira per one, and that gives you 2.551.5 million 
2.5 million. That's a lot of money. I know that this one <clears throat> over here, we, we you will have spent 1.6 million. This one is 2.5 point something million. And that's about 900,000 era. And with that 900,000 era, you're just going to remove, you know, cost of running the farm and cost of um, medication. Yeah, running the farm and medication. I believe that 900,000 will take care of that for, is, we're talking about just four months. 900,000 will take care of medication uh, for 1,000 birds, 900,000, and the cost of paying the salary of workers and running gen, some nights, you know, brooding and all those things. So 900,000 will take care of it. And what is even more advantageous is, or the, the bigger benefit for me here is the fact that the weight that you get, the birds will be weighing at 16 weeks then, they will be weighing close to 1.5 kg which is a very good weight. But if you buy them from outside, even when you get, if you get 1.2 kg, it's a miracle. Most of these birds weigh 1 kg, even 900 or something grams, 1.1 kg, you struggle to weigh 1.1 kg. No, most times they are underweight and it is when they get to your farm that you now start to give them more feed to, to really boost them. <clears throat> so I believe you guys are following and uh, if you're able to get your own day-old cheese and you raise them, I think you actually enjoy. And other benefits, you are sure of the vaccination and all that. However, if point of view is what um, helps you to start the business quickly and you know start to make your money, all you need to do is just make sure that you go through the right path. Don't just get point of view from anywhere because they can get you into trouble. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, well, that's about the, the little difference between um, the cheeks and point of lay. All right. So, at this point, when they are 22 weeks, I have a case study where at 22 weeks, the fellow who had about 2,000 plus point of uh, layers already started got, getting um, eight, eight crates. Yeah, eight crates. That's that's not enough to pay for their feeding. Yeah, one thousand birds should be eating almost um, <clears throat> almost five bags, four plus bags. So that's not enough to pay for their feeding. But then it's something. It started. It has started paying part of their feeding. So before long, and once they get to that rate, in another two weeks, they must have been paying for their feeding. So it's just. Um, it's just, it just starts getting interesting at that point. All right, so I wanted to focus on the data, please. So as you go down, you see the feed, the money keeps piling up, keeps piling up. But we we'll get to the let's just go, let's leave the um, the day old part. Let's go to the point of cage. So let's say you got them at maybe twelve weeks, <clears throat> and you still give them grower. You can see the price here is for grower. The money for the the bag of feed is for grower. The price here up to 21 weeks is for grower. So we expect you to have gotten more than 5% lay at 21, 22 weeks. Then you switch to layer um, mash. So the layer mash, the price has increased. So we start to slot in the price for the layers all the way down. So all the amounts that you are seeing here <clears throat> are what applies today today with the current market so all the way down we have all the data we've made allowance for mortality and all that so they keep laying for that this is point of cage and this is point of lay yeah this is point of lay same same thing similar everything goes <clears throat> so this is where it gets interesting i just want to show us something to help us understand what comes out of the business. Okay. This is quite practical. So you, the, the data, you may not be able to grasp everything except you have a file. So, but then I would ensure that I show you what I want to show you. All right. So let me show you this part of it. Okay. First, let me just show you uh one of the testimonials 
Okay, this is one of my clients. I don't know if, if she's watching now. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right. Okay, and this is this is our chart. You can see she said just this morning I I don't pack eight crates. So I was like, send me the video of the best two. They are 22 weeks and three days. Look at the hair, the size. So she's quite encouraged by the size of the hair. And I think she told me when they started to lay, it was around 17 weeks and maybe three days or one day. I'm not so sure now. So that is something. That is something. So let me now show you. <clears throat> A quick explanation of how you do your mathematics. <clears throat> so, to do the math, what, what we use is, <clears throat> I say the turnover. Usually, layer starts laying. They start laying anytime from around 17 to 18 weeks, usually. That's most of them. Most of farms record the first egg between 17 weeks and 18 weeks. <clears throat> And they attain, they can attain their peak. Their peak should be as high as 90 to 95 production within two months after starting. Yeah, that actually varies from farm to farm. If you are able to, all things being equal, if you're able to keep their management good, good enough, then you should be able to get to that peak uh, 90, 95 in two weeks before, uh, in two months before they get to the third month. Before they get to three months, before they complete three months laying, they should get to their peak. <clears throat> okay, so if that is the case, if that is the case, they will say the handy production also begins to decline after about seven months into lay. So that means if you are able to get them at, to the peak at maybe two months plus, or at most, maximum three months, that means if you if they if they are peak if they start to decline after seven months, that means you are able to get to the peak for or hold the peak for about four to five months, and that is good. That will actually help you in terms of getting more profit because after a while it starts to decline, though it declines at a very very slow rate from ninety something it might go to 91, 90, 90, 88, it might stay on eighty eight for a long time, eighty six. Gradually, it gets uh, to 79, and farmers are already you know, getting discouraged when it gets to 70 something. You know, they are already planning to sell. So, but even if if they are giving you as high as 60 something, they will still be paying for their feed. That's the interesting part of it. So, most ends are sold when production declines to about 55 percent or lesser, which is usually after 17 months. 17, 17 months is one year and five months. One year and five months. So for the sake of this one year cost analysis, we are using the average of 80% production. 80% <clears throat> production. And that actually works. So the other person that I supplied uh, with um, the point of, point of um, lay, I want, to, I want to try to quickly recall our last conversation. So I think they are already about seven months or eight months into lay, seven months or eight months into lay. And they are giving, they are currently giving, if not up to seven months, maybe six months into lay, they are currently giving about 90%, 90% production. And that is encouraging. That's encouraging. If they are giving 90% at six months or more that is encouraging so if you are able to maintain that and you still get 80 something 80 something at maybe nine months after in into lay then profit is coming so we expect the isa brown per the breed um information we expect the isa brown chickens to lay up to six eggs per week 
and over 300 eggs per year. So 80% uh, is a conservative percentage of 292 eggs per N in the first year. So because I, for me to say 80% average, you know, someone, somebody will want to question the fact that the hens, they start laying maybe 20% when they start, 30%, what about all those ones? Am I not considering that? And at the end, too, they start to decline 60 something percent and all that. So, to just clear all doubts, we already have a total number of eggs that the hen is supposed to lay in a year to be around 300 eggs if they are laying six eggs per, <clears throat> per week. And let's not forget, it takes about 26 to 27 hours for a complete cycle of the egg to be formed in the, in the hen and comes out as the egg that you pick. So about 26 hours to 27 hours. And if that cycle is real, that means that six eggs per week is possible. So a whole of 27 hours is the extra on the 24 hours because it takes about 26 to 27 hours. So let's say three hours extra on each day. So three hours in six places is even less than 24 hours. So I, don't, I know that mathematics is, it might be confusing for some people, but six eggs per week is actually good. It's conservative for um, that 26 to 27 hours cycle for the egg to come out. Okay, so, and we are even less than 300 eggs per year when we say 80%. 80% is actually 272 eggs, 292 eggs per year. So, that is quite conservative. As long as you can keep your management at par and you make sure that the bears are healthy for the most part. So you should be able to attain this. It's conservative, as I have said. You can actually do better than this. So expected number of eggs from 10,000. Now, I use this. the data here is actually on 10,000 birds. So in case you are, one, you are trying to do for 1,000, just divide anything you are trying to consider by 10. <clears throat> So, referring to the Excel sheet that shows number of mortalities, uh, calculating the number of eggs based on the average number of ends. Okay. So, you know, when they started laying, maybe from 1,000 N or 10,000 ends that you got, maybe you now have nine. Okay, this one says from the 10,000 hen, it was now. 9,453 when they started to lay, and at the end of the one year, it was 9,020. So you find the average of that, and the average of that gives us 9,236. So you now use that 9,236 to calculate the number of eggs that you get from the total flock that you have in a year, and that is. 80% of 9236, that's 80% production is the average we are using. So 80% of that gives us 7,388. Don't forget, we are talking about 10,000 ends. And if it were to be, <clears throat> excuse me, if, if it were to be 1,000 ends, so it's going to be 738 eggs per, per, hen, per hen per year. Am I correct? Yeah, yes. 738 eggs per hen per year. So total egg per year for this 10,000 flock is now 2,696,620 eggs per year. You know, you multiply this 7,388 by the total number of ends that you have in-house. That's the average. All right, so you get that figure, and then the crates, number of crates, you divide this 2,696,620 to by 30, because we have 30 eggs in a crate. So when you divide that, you have the figure 89,887, 89,887 crates per year, per year. So all together, if you sell that, if you sell those number of crates, with the current price, I, I use 1,850. I know there are people selling up to 1,009 <clears throat> and even more in some places. 
So this is also a good price. It's not too low and it's not too high. So it's a good price and you are going to be having 166,291,000. That's the total revenue you'll be having from this. So it's quite easy to get. And um, you would also be having what is not on that screen. You also be having the net revenue, which I, I think I showed in the last video I made. The re net revenue you'll be having from there, from this production for a year is 45 million, 45 point something million. And in a month, that means you'll be having about 3.8 million in a month for a 10,000 capacity flock. 3.8 million is, is not small money, man. It's almost 4 million. So that's a lot of money for you. That's a lot of money. All right. So I think that is a quick rundown of the analysis that uh, I have for you. You can actually do, you know, that final stage where I talked about the net profit, I've actually removed all the costs of production, the running the, gener the generator, paying your workers, the medication and vaccination. It's one of the uh, package that I prepare for those who need the cost analysis. You are considering to go into the business and you need the cost analysis. Uh, that's some of the things that I give them. At least it gives you the roadmap. It gives you the blueprint of what is going to happen, what's you know, the promise of the business. So you know whether you should continue or you should just back up. Maybe this is not a business for me. For somebody who feels like 3 point something million or almost 4 million for a 10,000 flock is no money, then poultry business or layer business is not for you. But if you think, wow, in a month, almost 4 million for something that is almost a system that, that operates itself, you know, the chickens feed themselves and they still give you excess. So someone, someone who is interested in that will just want to dive in. So I think that's that for today. That's that for today. And uh, I'll be entertaining questions right now. I'll be taking your questions, please throw in your questions as you may have them. Okay. All right. So I'm seeing um, Umar Sonny saying you need a uh, good point of lay. Yeah, don't worry. You can just reach out to us on WhatsApp. I'll put the number on the screen. So reach out to that number on WhatsApp and um, we should be able to attend to you. Yeah, that's the number to chat with on WhatsApp. 0706495 is the number to chat with. So please send in your questions. Let me quickly address them before the end of the class today. All right. Yeah, evening and welcome. Good evening and welcome. Thank you. Questions, 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 questions. All right. <clears throat> Yeah, I can see Mr. Sunday, Elendu, welcome, Adenze, welcome, or Adanze, welcome. Yeah, I wouldn't know. This person is saying, please, I need nice and pocket-friendly coop for 200 birds. Uh, is it the design? Is it the coop design you need, or you need the coop itself? You need the cage itself, or I don't know. So, because coop is coop, even means different things for different people. So, let me know if it's the design. Just try and be specific, okay? All right. So, this other person is asking. <clears throat> Okay, you know, generally we would actually believe, we we'll accept that layer production is, is, a, is a big deal. Like there's money in layer farming. 
<laughs> that's the reason why people are still doing it. That's the reason why, you know, big people are doing it. It's a big business. However, it's capital intensive. And there are challenges too. If you see, if you see someone telling you that, okay, run from poultry farming, run from layer farming, run from anything, it's probably because they have experienced the downside of it and they were not prepared for it. So it just took them by surprise and maybe the crash was too much, probably more than they bargained for. And because of that, they want to poison your mind and tell you that poultry farming is hey, it's next to the devil's business and all that. No. If all, if all things being equal, if God is on your side, or luck is, is on your side, as you may call it, it's it's a good business. A business that is bringing you three point something million, let's say you are able to invest so much money and you can get to that mark of 10,000 capacity and you are now getting 3.8 million a month, I believe that business allows you to even expand or have a reserve. So even if there's crisis, someday that reserve should help you. It should push you out of that crisis. But you know, most people, I don't know, maybe we just run a business and all the proceeds from it, we you know, I know we have things we need to spend money on. People have responsibilities. People have other businesses they want to expand and invest into. But then we should always have a reserve. Reserve helps you. It's, it helps you float when challenges come. So it helps you to float when the river of the business wants to overwhelm you. Reserves help you to float. So that's that's going to be a tip for somebody who might be considering, you know, it's always lucrative. Try, try and reach out to layer farms and tell them that you want to be getting eggs from them. They will tell you there's no slots all slots taken. As much egg as you can produce, there are people who are ready to pick them. That is a plus already. You know, for layer, uh, for broilers, sometimes you have challenges. The market is just loaded with broilers. The people are just pricing it down because, you know, there are options. They can just go elsewhere. But for layers, for the most part of the year, if you have glut, as excess supply, then there is, there is demand. If you have blood, it's just for maybe one month or at most two months. It doesn't really last for two months, maybe just one month. Maybe when people are just pumping, you know, their eggs out and all that. But before long, you know, some have sold their whole stuff and all that. There's always scarcity. So it's always a good business. As long as there's money, if you have the finance, you have the financial backbone, layer farming is it for you. All right, so <clears throat> what can cause suddenly drop in eggs in layer? Sickness will drop the eggs. Once they are sick, your eggs will drop. So you want to keep them at their best because, you know, one way that I can explain it, egg production is, or let me say production is a special demand you are placing on the hens. They want to live their lives. They want to eat your feed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the layers want to eat your feed and feel cozy. But if you want them to produce, you are placing the demand of production on them. It's a special demand that requires a particular level of wellness for them to really service you. So if you can keep their health good enough to service you, then they will service you. If not, they will under service you. And that means they are just eating the same amount of feed but giving you less eggs that, than you want. So if you can keep your health, okay, forget it, you will enjoy. So sickness will cause it to go down. Newcastle will cause the egg to drop. Newcastle is a disease that actually affects egg production in size, in form, and in quantity. So it will reduce the size of the eggs. It will give you misshaped eggs. It will give you shellless eggs. It will give you all manner of crazy eggs, and in quantity too, it will go down. That's why layer farmers often vaccinate their layers on a monthly basis or 
uh, once every two months, and some farms where their biosecurity is really tight, they do once every three months. But most people actually do it on a monthly basis, especially areas where Newcastle is endemic. And it's, it's just all over the places. All right. So and another thing is there's a disease called the egg drop syndrome. You would, if you have moved close to layer farmers or you yourself have practiced layer farming for a while, you must have heard of the vaccine three in one that they do give the two layers from the age of 15, 16, 17 weeks, usually before a few weeks before they start to lay. So that egg drop syndrome is part of a three-in-one vaccine. The other two are the Newcastle disease vaccine and the um, Gumboro, the IBD. <clears throat> so the combined history at the point where you cage your birds, they combine these three and give them the egg drop syndrome, the Lasuta and the Gumboro. <clears throat> is it Lasuta? Lasuta is just a strain of Newcastle disease vaccine. So not necessarily Lasuta. So if you also want, if you want to prevent the egg drop, you should give that vaccine, it's very important. Okay, so quickly, let's take some other questions. Make sure your birds are healthy and there will be no drop in eggs. Uh, make sure you keep them out of lice, you know, parasites. Parasites can suck their blood and inconvenience them. You know, sudden drop in egg can also be as a result of stress. <laughs> I tell you, if, if a snake, if a serpent should just enter into the, uh, the pen, and the birds noticed it, and they all shook, especially maybe in the morning. You know, the morning time is when they lay more. So maybe in the morning, it happened in the morning, or even in the night, it's going to delay that their egg for maybe a couple of minutes, several minutes, or a few hours. So you don't want stress around them. You don't want unnecessary noise. You don't want all those things. Just keep them in paradise and they will treat you to paradise. All right. So uh, my layers are 20 weeks, but only one of the bird have started laying out of 300 birds. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's allowed. It's allowed. <clears throat> it's allowed. 20 is not too late. As long as you have seen one egg, then you will see more. So just keep on giving them their grower mash and uh, don't give them layer mash yet. Don't give them layer mash. Some people believe that it is the layer mash that makes the ends to lay. No, 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 no. Even if you don't give them food, if you give them rice, they will still lay. Maybe not as much egg as they should, but they will lay. Any mature end will produce egg as long as they are okay in terms of health. Any mature end will produce, whether they lay, whether they eat layer mash or they are mated by cork they will produce. They don't have to be mated with the cork. They will produce. So, <clears throat> 20 weeks, the, we, before 23 weeks, the rest of them should pick. Most of them should pick. So, just give them some time. Some, some, of, some of them are late starters. Some are early starters. And one of the advantages of late starters, you should also check the body weight if they are up to 1.5 kg or more then you should know you're expecting eggs. Also, you can check their pelvic bone and see if two, two fingers can slide in between the pelvic um, bone. If that is the case, then you should expect eggs very soon. So don't worry, just keep them, keep giving them feed and give them multivitamin, but don't overfeed them. Don't give them layer mash. Just keep them grow up. Make sure they are okay. Water all the time. Multivitamin consistently or maybe at least twice or once a week. <clears throat> that should do. Make sure they are fine and don't worry. The eggs will come. As long as you have seen one, that's enough hope, actually. All right. Uh, I'm trying to see other questions. Okay, this person is saying how much is 
point of lay. Point of lay actually varies. It depends on the age, it depends on the farm it was raised, it depends on the kind of management they went through, it depends on their final weight, you know, it depends on a lot of factors. But you should get between 2,500 and 2,700. That's a good price to, or that's a good money to use in chasing your point of lay. Right. So, okay, this person is asking between Issa Brown and Noila, which one can you recommend in terms of mortality rate? What is the goal here? Is it egg laying or what? If egg laying is the goal, then Noila is not a is not a competitor at all. Noila is not a competitor with the lay with the layers. Noilas are not layers. They are dual purpose breed. They are for both egg and meat. <clears throat> Excuse me. They are for both egg and meat. And you know, it's always better when you specialize in one thing. The layers specialize in laying eggs. It's not as if when you kill them and marinate them. <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. It's not as if when you slaughter them and you marinate, you cannot eat them. They are still meat, but they don't really grow big in a short period of time like the noilers would do in four months. You know, they are really robust and good looking. The layers can be skinny and lean massive eggs, so they are really for eggs. So you can't, where, where, where the layers will give you about 300 eggs in one year, the Nola may not give you more than 180. So you should look at that. Some of them will give you more than it, maybe 200 and something, but definitely not up to 300. So the, the Nola is not a competitor at all, at all. But talk of mortality, the Issa Brown, they are hardy too. They, they are good, Espe especially if you get them from a good source, they are good. It's only if you have a, maybe a strange infection which can happen to any kind of chicken. A strange infection and you don't attend to it quickly, then it may be able to bring them down. But then, generally, they are okay. Noilers may be more hardy, they may be more rugged, but layers are not really weak either. They're not weak either. Okay, but if it is for egg, you know, mortality alone is not a is not enough reason to now pick noila instead of layers. Okay, there are other questions. Let's quickly go and take it. Okay, I think I've answered the price of. Okay, pearl millet. Actually, in Nigeria, we don't we don't use we don't use this, so it's not a familiar ingredient. It's not a familiar ingredient for us here, so I might not be able to answer this question. Pearl millet. I'll, I'll just check that after after the session, but it's not a familiar ingredient that we use in Nigeria, so I won't be able to take that now. Sorry, Hassan. Oh, okay. This person is asking if we can raise layer organically. If you want to do organic poultry, I would encourage you to start with noil, uh, broilers <clears throat> or noilers, master it, and then graduate into layers. Yeah, layers can be raised organically. I actually have a layer an organic medication chart for layers from day one to 100 and even into lane. Uh, it, some people have requested for it and I have been able to sell it to them. It's a material, it's a, an educational material. It comes with the course, organic poultry, farming, and those who have special need for the layers, they request for it. So it's possible, it's, it's very possible. However, it is important that you familiarize your layers with all the spices, the herbs and spices that you'll be using later on because they are sensitive chickens. Layers are sensitive. Their reproductive organs are sensitive to some things. Some things, if they get used to it early in life, then it is good they can manage it. Some things are not good at all <clears throat> for laying chickens. So, you need to understand all those things. And that's one of the reasons why you need to take the organic poultry course 
We don't just pick the knowledge randomly from the internet and say, okay, this thing is used for chickens, this thing is used for chickens, and you just use. Somebody has called me and he was using something that you should not use for layers. He was using it and he was complaining that ah, the hens were laying, they started laying, but after a while, they just stopped laying. You know, later trace it back to when he started using that thing. And I was able to tell him, okay, ah, no, 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 no. It's a no, it's a no good area. So full knowledge is important if i want to take the organic poultry course if you want to go into organic poultry all right so we we'll, we we'll, we'll there again who we'll is there again okay this person is asking how many bags <clears throat> can you use Within one week to eight weeks, the all you all you need is to just go to the um, breed you want to get, go to their page and get the layer um, feed feed chart, the feeding program for them. It's actually appropriate to do it that way. However, even if you study the the chart I showed you earlier you notice the daily consumption is there, all those things. So these things are, they are, they are, they are, they are, they are fixed for each breed. You, you see what they will eat week one, week, week two, week three, let's go to the DOG. So she start with 10 grams per week, 17 grams and like that, like that. So this is what you need to plot together. But for whichever breed you are considering, just Google it and you see their feed um, requirements. So you just follow that chart and you will not go wrong. Because if you pick for a particular breed and you use for user data for another breed, you may not be getting the best result. So you choose the breed you want to work with and then you just download the the guide from the breed guide from the internet and you'll be fine. All right, so uh, let's take more questions. Isa Brown, Isa Brown is the people's choice. Yeah, Isa Brown is the people's choice in Nigeria. It's not what every farm has, but it's what most of the farm, at least 80% of the farms, I believe, have Isa Brown. There's also the Nera, the Black Nera, the Bovans Nera, no? And there's the white one, the eyeballing. There's the white layers. Those ones are usually smaller. They are smaller in size, but then their eggs can be bigger. They are smaller in size. When you are selling them at point at no, no point at hopefully, that is at um spent layers. When you are selling them, usually the, the meat is smaller than <clears throat> the Isa Brown or the Nera, the black Nera. So people may not want to buy it at the kind of price you may want to sell. So that's one of the reasons why people don't really go for the white. But production-wise, they are good. They are good. And they look funny too to me. Their comb is quite big and curvy, you know? They look funny to me. Their comb is not usually red. Okay. Um... Are we done with the questions? Which breed? Yeah, I've mentioned that organic poultry. All right. So if that is all the questions we have, we might be wrapping it up here. And uh, don't forget, if you have joined the stream, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining. But don't forget to click the like button and ensure that you inform YouTube that you are enjoying something here. Again, if you are just joining us for the first time, this is DIY Agri, your number one animal scientist, and your poultry success partner. <clears throat> so do me a favor if you are yet to join or follow me on Instagram. That is the Instagram handle on the in the comment section. So please go ahead and join us on Instagram because a lot is happening there too. You don't want to miss out on the things happening there. All right. So thank you for. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for joining. 
if any question still comes in the next one minute to take it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, and in case you've been wondering, oh, it's like DIY is talking about layers. I'm also planning a layer farming masterclass like no other very soon. I've been working on it for a while. I wanted it to be really massive, something that once you take it, it's enough to fuel you and also carry you through the process of raising your own layers and becoming a farmer, a layer farmer. Okay, so it's going to be a masterclass like no other. I'm going to be dishing out a lot of freebies, things that you probably have been searching for for months and years. <clears throat> Questions on your mind that you have had for years. Probably you've been hiring poultry. You've been hiring layer farming for a long time and you've had some questions and nobody has been able to answer them. Don't worry. Just like I su surprised you all in the area of broilers and I told you guys the differences between the breeds and many of you were like, wow, nobody has ever talked about these breeds like this. Don't worry. I also have all that for layers coming for you. So questions that have been on your mind, no one has answered. Don't worry. I've got you. So just prepare your mind for the organic poultry course. If you want way to stand by is to subscribe to the YouTube channel, join me on Instagram, anywhere you find DIY, just join so that once the program is out, you'll be informed one way or the other. If you have my contact and I've saved yours, you see it on my status. If you are on Instagram, you meet me there. If you are on YouTube, subscribe on YouTube and turn on the notification bell then you get the notification on YouTube. And don't worry, just make sure that anywhere you see or cite DIY, the Poetry Success Partner, make sure you join and God bless you. So thank you all for joining. We've quickly talked about um, what layer farming holds for you. And I believe that if you go in there, especially if you are able to take the course I'm going to be hosting soon, it should, you should be hearing about it in the next couple of weeks, maybe in two weeks time or so. I should come out with the date and everything. So if you take that course, forget it, you are made for layer farming. All right. So thank you once again for joining and God bless you. Do have a lovely weekend. Bye and see you in the next video.